Hello everyone, this is Samuel with Truth and Reason Ministry. And in this, this video today, I want to talk about an encounter of an atheist versus the Bible. And in this situation, I took a little bit of a different approach to how I usually approach evangelism. And that was inspired by a particular book that I just want to take a few minutes to talk about. And that book is... How to Work for Christ by R.A. Torrey. Now, R.A. Torrey is a 19th and 20th century evangelist and pastor. And in the first volume of this book, this book actually has three volumes in it. And in volume one, he talks about how to evangelize different types of people and to meet their difficulties and to meet their objections and take and check this. This man has a Bible verse for every single type of person that you'll talk to. Well, not every single, but many different classes and types of people. And his emphasis is using the Bible to meet every objection that a person brings up. And, a per and people from every background that he came across. He just used the Bible. He didn't really argue with history. He didn't really argue using uh, philosophy or the different types of logical arguments that you that you that you usually see but he used scripture and he and he used it in a logical fashion and I remember reading this and thinking to myself oh man this is awesome not very many people are using just Bible verses to answer difficulties objections and different positions so I thought oh man let me try this so right before I went to the mall I made it made up in my mind, okay, I'm going to quote nothing but scripture. Doesn't matter who I come across, it doesn't matter what they say, I'm going to answer them and share the gospel using Bible verses. So I go to the mall and I see a young man sitting and I walk up to him and I say, "Hello, excuse me, sir. My name is Samuel and I'm from a church in town and I'm just asking people the question, are you going to heaven?" And what did this guy say? He says, no, I'm not going to heaven. And I said, well, why is that? I'm an atheist. And I'm like, okay, well, if you don't mind me asking, why are you an atheist? And he responded, well, it's because there's no evidence for God's existence. And here, I'm like, should I argue or should I quote the scripture? So what I did was I referenced Romans chapter 1, verse 20, which says, for since the creation of the world... His invisible attributes, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. And I talked to him about that a little bit, and he didn't really have much of an answer, so he kind of switched to another question very quickly. He's like, well, which God? And again, I'm like, okay, how am I going to answer this question? Oh, let me use a Bible verse. So I went to Isaiah chapter 41, where God gives a lot of evidence for his existence. He painstakingly talks about why he's the true God above all of the other gods that people were believing in during the time of Isaiah back in the 700s BC. So I referenced that to him. And in this video, I want to just read that briefly. This is Isaiah chapter 41, verses 21 through 23. And God says, present your case, the Lord says. Bring forward your strong arguments, the king of Jacob says. Let them bring forth and declare to us what is going to take place. As for the former events, declare what they were, that we may consider them and know their outcome. Or announce to us what is coming. Declare the things that are going to come that we may know that you are gods. Indeed, do good or evil, that we may anxiously look about us and fear together. Now, what's remarkable here is that God is giving a challenge to these false gods, and he's actually asking them to bring their arguments and saying, can you predict the future? Do you know the past? 
And he's offering that challenge because oftentimes in the Bible, God gives very many prophecies. He predicts the future. He tells what's going to happen in the future in order to show that he really is the God of the world. And now he's offering this challenge to other so-called gods. So I made a reference to this to the to our to um, my new atheist friend at the mall. And all of a sudden, the tension kind of builds up in his face. And he's like, you're not going to convert me. And he shuts down the conversation right there. It's over. And what happened there was that the word of God cut through his objections. It answered his position to the point of he didn't really have anything else to say. And I don't think he really thought through his atheism. So the word of God just made quick work of his position. And I had a similar thing happen uh, some years ago when I worked at Circle K, which is a gas station. I was speaking with an atheist and I used the same tactic there. This guy says, well, how do you know that God exists? And once again, I quoted Romans chapter one, verse 20. And he had kind of a similar reaction. He says, but uh, uh, I, I can't argue with that. What are you talking about? And he sort of just kind of shut down as well when I use that verse. And, and the goal really isn't to, to win an argument or to cause people to shut down, but this simply illustrates that there is power in the word of God to meet people's objections, to uncover the, the things that people are putting over them to, to shield themselves from God's truth. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 says, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So the Word of God knows our hearts, it knows our minds, and it is able to cut through our smoke screens. It cuts through our difficulties. It cuts through our objections so that we can hear the truth of God so that we can be vulnerable to the truth of God and God speaks through his word. So my call to action to you today, if you're watching this, is to think of defeater beliefs. Anything that maybe someone you know is saying to reject Christianity. For example, the Bible has no eyewitness accounts or there is no God. Or many religions in the world are actually as valid as you say Christianity is. Or my certain ethic here is, is, is true, even though the Bible says that it's not true. You know, think of anything that people are using that you know or that culture is using to reject the Bible and find Bible verses to memorize, uh, find passages to memorize. And when those come up, just quote them and see what God does. See if God slices through. See what the Spirit does in that situation. And if and if God works in their heart, which, which he will because it is the sword of the Spirit. So thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.